Hello, thanks for joining me today. This is Danny, and welcome back to my base on the F on the Forgecraft server, the Dark Forgecraft server. Today we are going to continue working with pneumatic craft, and we are going to make ourselves a pneumatic helmet. So this pneumatic helmet, as I mentioned last time, is pretty cool. It's kind of like the Iron Man helmet, where it gives you little overlays giving you information about what is going on around you and like when you look at blocks it gives you lots of information about the blocks it gives you information about entities mobs all, all kinds of different stuff but making this guy isn't really going to be all that easy um, because we have a lot of infrastructure that we need to get in place and uh, one of the probably most one of the trickiest things is um, we've got okay we need these four air canisters those are pretty easy we've got everything we need for these <clears throat> just pressure tubes, compressed iron. But what's really tricky is this printed circuit board. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. The printed circuit, circuit board needs an unassembled printed circuit board, an unassembled PCB, and these transistors. Now the transistors are pretty easy. They're just a few items, some plastic, whatever, some random items, put in the pressure chamber. No biggie, right? The unassembled PCB is made with an assembly controller um, at least this is the most efficient way to make it with an assembly controller which is basically the now the assembler con assembly controller is pretty cool it's multiple pieces that you can put together um, depending on the recipe that you're going to use you would use different pieces for this particular recipe which would be the um, laser recipe we would need the platform the IO two IO units and an assembly laser and that would turn an empty PCB into an unassembled PCB. The empty PCB is pretty easy. Um, it's just compressed iron and green plastic put in our pressure chamber. However, in order to make our um, assembly units, such as our assembly platform, we need a printed circuit board. <laughs> to make the assembly laser, we need a printed circuit board. To make the I.O. units, we need a printed circuit board. So what's going on here? How are we going to do this? We've got a catch-22. Well, not exactly. There is another way to make an unassembled PCB, and that is through etching acid. And that is where we make a bucket of empty or of etching acid, and we drop an empty PCB into the bucket or into a puddle of etching acid and then we get an assembled PCB. Sounds easy, right? Well, that's not the whole story. <laughs> There's two things that have to happen here. First of all, we have to make the etching acid, which is actually pretty easy. It's just um, this stuff in a pressure chamber. Um, but what's a little tricky is that When we make an empty PCB, like like this, it has a 0% chance <laughs> of becoming uh, of becoming an etched PCB. We have to put it in a UV light box. Otherwise, if we drop this thing in the etching acid, it will not it, it'll do nothing. It'll become a um, failed PCB, which we would then smelt to turn it back into an empty PCB. And we could just keep doing that over and over and over again, and we wouldn't get anywhere. <laughs> but when we stick it in this UV light box, where's the UV light box? We, we stick it in this UV light box, and what happens is we give this thing pressure, and um, we stick it in there for a few minutes, and little by little, this little bar, see how there's kind of a progress bar there, will go up, and the etching chance will increase until it eventually reaches 100%. Theoretically, we could take it out of the light box when it's half done, stick it in our etching acid and it would have a 50% chance of becoming um, a unassembled PCB. But of course we're not going to do that, we'll just stick it in the light box till it's 100%. Um, so redstone lamps, compressed iron, pressure tube, PCB blueprint, what's this? <laughs> the PCB blueprint is something that we get out of the Amadron tablet. There is no crafting recipe for this guy, um, so we're going to have to make ourselves an Amadron tablet and then give it eight emeralds. The Amadron tablet is actually pretty cool. Um, it is a trading interface. 
So we've got a little bit of a trek ahead of us before we have our pneumatic helmet. So I will meet you in the room, <laughs> in our pneumatic lab, once I have all the stuff that we need to get started. Alright, so I've made myself a charging station because we're going to need it in order to charge our tablet. And this guy, it hooks into our um, pressure unit. It's got a, our pressure network, I guess you could say. It's got a pressure tube hooking into it. And it has five bars, well, four and a half or so bars of pressure, and it is pressurizing our Amadron tablet. This is kind of interesting. You set up a chest, you shift right click on it with your um, tablet. <laughs> it binds the tablet to the chest. It, this becomes the trading chest. So I put eight emeralds in the chest. So now if I look in the tablet, you can see there are thing, the things that cost eight emeralds are highlighted for me. So we want this PCB blueprint. Right click, adds one to the basket. Now order. So apparently a drone will come to pick up the items. <laughs> and another will come to deliver. Oh, oh look at that crazy so that one picked up okay <laughs> so they took my payment uh, where's my item oh here it comes look at that wonder where it comes from weird I wonder where it goes. <laughs> Just nice, <laughs> nice, cool. So it just kind of despawns. That is really neat. Wow, cool. So we've got ourselves our PCB blueprint. So we should be able to make our UV light box now. So we're going to need three redstone lamps, pressure tube, and right, some I've other crafting five stuff. Five so green that's... plastics and and six compressed iron. <laughs> How about five compressed iron? Stick those in here. <laughs> you can hear the door opening and closing in order to reduce the amount of pressure that is lost. Hmm, those particles are crazy. I don't know why there's so many particles. Makes it kind of hard to see what's going on. But we're making some circuits right now, and our filter is not going to let them through. Uh, why don't we just let's just get rid of the filter? Okay. So it made one empty PCB for us. Um, so now we can actually set the filter there. All right, so now those should stay in there until they're PCBs and then they'll come out the bottom here. So we've got our light box over here, our UV light box. Apparently it takes pressure on the bottom side. So I had to have a pipe come out here and we can stick one PCB in here, one PCB at a time. And right now you see etch success is 1%. I think we are going to want some speed upgrades because this is really slow. <laughs> so let's see, speed upgrade. Um, I don't know if we have what we need for a speed upgrade actually. Speed upgrade requires um, this lubricant, which we get when we um, when we take diesel and redstone, oh, actually we can do that. Diesel, redstone, and a fairly low temperature. So actually we can do that. Let's do that. Diesel, I think we have coming into the top one. So let's dump some redstone in there. See right now, it would convert diesel to um, kerosene and it requires a fairly high temperature. But if we throw some redstone in there, Let's just grab a half a stack. Actually, let's grab a quarter of a stack. All of a sudden the temperature thing dropped way down. So we, so it doesn't need to be quite as hot. Um, so we can grab one of our 
vortex tubes. Now these vortex tu tubes, when you place them, the cold side is going to face the block that you click on. <laughs> so we've got to put a block of, and we want the hot side on here. So I have to place that there and then we can go boom like that. And then you can see the hot side is facing that. And I've got tr pressure tubes running all through the wall and you can see the little holes there. Um, these things suck a lot of pressure and that's why I've, j I've been taking them down when we're not using them. So cool, there we go. We've got a bunch of lubricant. <laughs> so I grab a speed. I end up with an empty bucket. I can grab another bucket. Throw it in my AE system. Grab another speed upgrade. All right, we got ourselves fives right there. So that should speed things up. It's also going to use a lot more pressure, but that is fine with me. Right, it's done. <laughs> it kind of gave me an indication the lighting changed in there <laughs> when it was finished. So now it's done. We can stick the next one in. Of course, I could probably put a hopper and piping on here and stuff, but I'm not going to worry too much about that right now. Um, now, oops, actually, now what we got to do is make that acid stuff. Okay, water, green plastic, spider eye. Okay. Probably put a speed upgrade on this guy too. And there's our bucket. It's putting it in the chamber. <laughs> and now it's opening the bottom door and it's gonna drop it into the hopper and then into our chest. Nice. PCB number two is finished. Let's throw another one in there. Too bad these don't stack. Mm. Bummer. S All right, so now we need to find a place to put this acid. Um, as you might guess, the acid hurts. <laughs> so we don't want to put it someplace where we're going to fall into it, although we are going to have to step into it in order to get our items out. Um, we do that, and then we walk up sneak up to it, throw in our etch success is 100%, so these will work. We throw these in there for about five minutes and they will become doo -doo -doo -doo, unassembled PCBs. So now I can throw this one in there. Now if I go in here, you can see I got hurt. Not much, probably because of my armor. Um, and you can see the edging progress is 15%. So we still got a ways to go. It takes about five minutes. All right, we got um, <laughs> five unassembled PCBs and these actually stack, so that's nice. And uh, I just made three transistors because we need those for our printed circuit board. And now I need to make three capacitors, which are redstone, compressed iron, and cyan plastic. However, I ran out of plastic and now I'm refining some more oil, so. Now I'm waiting around for that. Oh, actually we got some plastic now, yay. Okay, three compressed iron, three cyan plastic, and three redstone. So it's opening, <laughs> it's letting those in one stack at a time. And actually what I did down here on our filter is you can set, if you click here, you can set it based on iron name or item name and just type in capacitor. Since I don't have a capacitor yet to put in there as a filter, so when it creates a capacitor, it should be able to drop it out right away. <laughs> There's so many particles in there. <laughs> oh, they're there. Yep, you can see the floor opening up and they're dropping out. Yay. All right, now we can make, I think we have everything we need now. Our printed circuit board. Actually, I'm going to just drop all these in there. Are we losing pressure? I guess so. Yay, our first printed circuit board. <gasps> guess what? <laughs> That's the last time we're going to have to do all that. Yay. <laughs> 
I made a bunch of these air canisters. Let me just stick that there. And there's our pneumatic helmet. Yay! Now we need to charge it up. Alright, actually, while that's charging... Oh my gosh. While that is slowly charging, <laughs> um, there are a couple of upgrades that we can add to that helmet that will actually make it, well, useful. Because right now it isn't really going to do much of anything. Much fully charged. Well, it's not fully charged, but it's as charged as our current system can charge it. <laughs> so we can take that off. I put every upgrade in it except the range upgrade, just because with all these other upgrades, especially the, um, what is it, the block tracker, the range upgrade really, it goes too far. <laughs> and it ends up slowing down your game crazy crazily or, or whatever um <laughs> so so here's what i've got we've got the block tracker um we've got the coordinate tracker we've got the item search the entity tracker and the thumbcraft upgrade i actually went ahead and made myself a thumbcraft wand just a uh, iron capped wooden wand just so that i could make a crucible and a balanced shard so um, there's everything else I already had on hand, but this is one thing that you need to, uh, you need some Thaumcraft infrastructure in order to do that, but not much. So we have the Thaumcraft upgrade. So we have all the upgrades. And this is showing, I have, if you search for pneumatic helmet in the, uh, in NEI, you'll actually get all the upgrades for it because, um, they're all listed under used in. So, and there's six different upgrades. <coughs> So I've got everything in there except the range upgrade. And then if we put this guy on, now if we put this guy on right now, um, it's going to be a little overwhelming and it might slow down my game a little bit because I've got all those upgrades in it. Um, but once we put it on, you can see it's loading. There's progress bar, block tracker found, entity tracker found, item search upgrade found, coordinator tracker found. Boom. All right, helmet pressure. So it's showing us our helmet pressure in the upper right hand corner. It's showing the number of blocks being tracked right now. And if we look around, we can see all kinds of craziness around us. And it's actually showing us stuff that's pretty far away down there. Um, and you can all, you might also be able to tell as they move around that there's a lot of choppiness here because this thing is really, um, really taking some serious. Uh, <laughs> Some serious uh, processor. Okay, so then, um, actually, let's check. I changed the controls because they were conflicting with another mod, and I don't remember what I set them to. So let's take a look. We've got pneumatic craft, pneumatic helmet hack seven, helmet options eight. Um, I'm not really sure what the hack does. When I press seven, it doesn't do anything. But when I press eight, we get our little. Um, thing. We can disable the helmet. So if you wanted to just wear the helmet and only enable it when you want it, you can do that. It does give you some protection. As you can see, it's not full diamond protection. And let's see. So now here's our, all of our different upgrades and the settings for them. So the block tracker. I actually unchecked almost everything except inventories and mis miscellaneous blocks. If we turn everything on, um, End portals, monster spawners, peripherals, thumbcraft. Now I can't read this because the because the GUI is a little messed up there. This because as you can see, things are kind of overlapped. Um, we can move the stats screen. This is the block tracker stats. We can click on that and move it around because I think by default some of them actually end up overlapping up there. But now if we look at stuff like our air compressor, we can see the contents. So if this was a chest, we would see a list of everything in the chest. But since it's an air compressor, we're just seeing the coal that's in it. We have our, and then it shows that it is a computer craft peripheral and it shows the available computer craft method. So if you use computer craft, this is a really, really useful way to, um, I don't know, it doesn't have any information. It's a really useful way to find out which blocks have computer craft um, can be used as computer craft perif peripherals. Oh boy. 
There's a lot going on. Actually, why don't we... The block tracker really is the most... Um... Oh, I have the entity tracker to say... Okay, I actually have everything disabled except for the coordinate tracker and the block tracker. Um, and the block tracker alone is really... its I think it's really the most processor intensive thing here. So if you've got your block tracker on, um, especially if it's showing everything like I am right now, um, it's going to slow down your game a little bit. Of course, it all depends, you know, on how powerful your game, or how powerful your computer is, and how powerful your. Uh, sir, whoa, whoa, <laughs> that was crazy. Okay, well, my <laughs> my game just crashed when I looked at my ME system. Um, my client crashed, and it <laughs> it like completely stopped because it was loading all that information and then I switched to another program and I think I don't know something about switching to the other program I think made a crash but um, so that <laughs> so that's the block tracker um, I actually had it had turned off inventories but um, you can see monster spawners and if we find a monster spawner it'll actually show us when the next monster is gonna spawn um, we can find silver fish, fish blocks. I mean, some of the stuff that we're seeing down there might be silver fish blocks. We can see end portal frames, TNT. We can find tripwire hooks. Um, but it's probably a good idea to only have turned on what you want to find. <laughs> because as you can see, there is a lot of, a lot of information. Um, but I'm actually going to turn the block tracker off right now, and we're going to take a look at the entity tracker. I'll turn that on. So you can, so you can, you can see it's loading all nearby entities. I think the, by default the range is 30 blocks, so it's going to load information about any entities that it finds within 30 blocks of here. If we have our range upgrade in it. Actually, let's throw the range upgrade in it. The only thing, I don't like using the range upgrade for the block tracker because the block tracker is already um, already slows down the game too much. <laughs> but the entity tracker, I mean, I guess it depends how many entities are around, but I haven't really had any trouble with the entity tracker. But the entity tracker is nice if you are um, if you want to get warned <laughs> when a mob is sneaking up behind you. A mob is targeting you. It says up in the upper left. What is that? Oh, it's a sheep. This animal can be bred. So two two mobs are targeting us right now. <laughs> I don't know where they are. I only see sheep. Let's see. Oh, a mob is targeting you. So there's our zombie. Shows us what he's gonna drop. <laughs> and it, oh, look at that! It shows us who his target is. Nice. So if there was another player here, we'd be able to tell whether the zombie was targeting us. <laughs> lost target. Yep, we lost the target. Alright, so there's a skeleton here. Hey, it didn't tell us it was targeting us. Target. Hmm. <laughs> nice. A mob is targeting you. <laughs> That's so cool. Dun dun dun! A mob is targeting you. That's our entity tracker. And we can filter it, so if we want to just find pigs, or if we just want to find mobs, and I think at, at mob gives you hostile mobs. Um, and then there's a few others. You can look it up on the wiki to see what the other ones are. And then the item search upgrade... Oh wait, let's turn this off. Item search upgrade, we basically search for an item. And this thing is really slow, it's basically just like the creative um, search the creative mode search. So let's say if we're, we want to find some rubber. <laughs> See? Because <laughs> it performs a search at every single... So let's say rubber. Raw rubber. So now our th we are looking for raw rubber. Oh, that's 
enable it. So I've got some here in my inventory. So if we throw it down there, and we can see through the wall that there's rubber there now. Let's throw some rubber in there. And then just for just to make sure. Let's disable this. And re-enable it. Yeah, it's not showing it. So I think we actually have to have the block tracker on as well. Let's just turn everything off except inventories. Okay, so yep, there we go. So if we had a whole bunch of chests set up, <laughs> and you wanted to find out where the heck, you, where the frick your rubber is, <laughs> you could do that, and then you'd be able to find it. So if we had some there. If we threw some on the ground, it'll highlight that too. Whoa! It highlighted really big, maybe because there's eight of them. We take that out, and we'll see the green thing will disappear. But it's still showing us that it's an inventory. Of course, there's nothing in there. All right, what else do we got? What else can we play with on here? So that's our ent item search upgrade. It's too bad we can't search for specific blocks like this, though. That would be really, you know, like diamond blocks. <laughs> coordinate tracker upgrade. Um, so the coordinate tracker upgrade has a couple different things that you can do with it. Um, one of them is, let's say if we're in a cave or something. Do I have a cave down here? say we're down in here and we're like how the frick do we get out of here so we go there we turn our coordinate tracker upgrade on and we navigate to the surface so it's going to find a, six, a route to the surface and it's going to show us it isn't that cool and I don't think it assumes that we can fly so it's going to find us a route that we can actually walk out of or swim. <laughs> Why is that? Oh, 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 right. <laughs> That's an aura node. That's a Thaumcraft aura node. So having the um, Thaumcraft upgrade in there actually gives us um, basically goggles of revealing. Actually, we should turn our mob tracker on while we're down here, too. Why not, hey? <laughs> Entity tracker. <laughs> a mob is targeting you. Lots of mobs are targeting us. Man, it's a long way out of here when if you can't fly. Oh, essence berries. <laughs> Yay, and I think that blue block is the surface. Yep. Yay. So we found our way to the surface. Thanks to our pneumatic helmet. Up a little bit. So we can select a target and it tells us right click the desired coordinate. So let's say we want um, we want to go out on a trek, <laughs> but but we want to make sure that we're gonna be able to find our way back. So we right click that block, and it's now um, that is now our target block. So wherever we go, it's going to give us a path to get back there. Oh, but it does recognize that we're flying. Nice. Okay. So if you're flying, it'll give us a direct route. Um, darn it. The helmet? Oh no, the helmet is almost out of air. <laughs> Crap. Alright, I'll show you this real quickly. So, if we go in here, we can say X-ray, and then we can see through blocks. We can see our path through the blocks and see where, where it's going to take us. Say so we want to do some building on the other side of this wall. <laughs> or on the other side of this wall or whatever. We can select a target, and then we can see it through the walls. So if we want to do some wiring... <laughs> Or we want to build a multi-story house, and we want things Approaching. to be lined up. See, now it's red, telling me that we're far away from our target. And you can see as you get closer to the target, it gets yellowish and then green. Um, let's get a little closer. Just so that we don't lock up our game again. <laughs> Whoa! So it uses, it uses the same pathfinding that mobs use. As you can see, it's not perfect. <laughs> so that is the pneumatic helmet. <laughs> we looked at all the upgrades. 
and we crashed your computer once <laughs> with the uh, block tracker upgrade so be a little careful about that just one thing to remember about the pneumatic helmet is it's it's giving you it's gathering a lot of information and uh, so just be careful how you use it because you can lock up your game <laughs> And apparently you can crash your game as well, which I did, but like I said, it just crashed the client, it didn't crash the server, so that's good. The helmet is almost out of air. Um, so yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's a cool item. I mean, it's, it's probably more fun than practical, but that's okay. You know, it's a game. <laughs> it's all about fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. Next time we are actually going to take a small break, a short break from Pneumaticraft, um, because... Uh... You may notice I'm wearing flux infused armor and uh, I actually haven't built it yet <laughs> because I actually have already recorded this episode and I've already recorded the next episode as well um, where we are going to um, build some crash dummies or some te some yeah some crash dummies which you can see in the background there which I also haven't built yet <laughs> in this episode we'll be building those in the next episode and we're going to be testing out some different armor and and trying to figure out which one is best and we're gonna we're gonna be using two benchmarks to test out all the different types of armor and one of those is going to be the, the dummies um, and I'll show you how those are used next time and then the other way is by uh, facing the Gaia Guardian <laughs> And we're actually going to face the tier 2 as well. Uh, the tier 2 Gaia Guardian who is one crazy MF and uh, yeah, he's nuts. And and we're going to see, we're going to try all the different armors against him and see which ones work out best for us. So, and we're actually going to make some um, other types of armor too. So I'm not going to give away too much about that because it already happened and if I'm not careful I'm going to give away the uh, ending. But you some of it I may have already given away since you can see what armor I'm wearing right now um, <laughs> but I kinda forgot about that as I was getting ready to end this video so you got a little sneak peek a little unexpected sneak peek um, at what's going to happen in the future so we're gonna do that next time and then after that we're gonna start playing with drones I'm pretty excited about drones um, and uh, yeah we're gonna the helmet is out of air we're going to set up some drones up here as guards. And I don't know, maybe we'll do some other interesting stuff with drones too. I mean, we can use them for building, we can use them for um, all kinds of stuff. I mean, they're kind of like the computer craft turtles, but they are easier to program and they fly and um, they're almost a little like golems too. But uh, okay, I'm going to stop talking about that because I'm going to tell you all about that in when we do it. <laughs> so if you did enjoy this please click the like button below and i thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye, -bye.